Hey friends, I'm Daniel Nesbitt, and welcome back to uh, another episode, or I guess the second episode, of designing a font that's been inspired by sign painting. Now, truth be told, I had a little bit of a gap between the first episode of this series and the second one, but it is with good reason because I've uh, actually taken some time to learn uh, quite a bit about scripts and how to set those up, uh, particularly what goes into things like angles and that kind of thing, which I'll be sharing in a little bit here. Um, but I just wanted to keep things moving along a little bit because uh, I know it had been a while and I've also been working on another series on the Fix Your Font series. Uh, so I figured I would just kind of jump in here um, and at least kind of get things back on track with uh, this sign painting typeface. Uh, so I haven't set up anything in glyphs yet and uh, in this episode we're just going to kind of do that and then maybe get a little bit of a start on some of the letters here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm using the uh, new glyph from uh, the new glyph, new from glyph sets, if I get it right, um, which is kind of handy because I get my A through Z here, which I'm uh, wanting to use. And I'm just going to jump in. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is just grab the image that I took into uh, Photoshop and I edited it. Uh, edited it a little bit, if I can get the word right. Uh, basically, to just make this a nice, pure black and white image. Um, the other thing that uh, if you're uh, kind of a very eagle-eyed person, um, I did make some adjustments to this uh, post-processing here. Um, so as I try and get this positioned here, I'll explain uh, what the situation is. So um, we'll just kind of get this and I'm just gonna go with the default um, settings here that we've got in glyphs. I'm not really too worried about um, adjusting those. I'm fine with uh, the X height and all that kind of stuff. So we'll kind of get it somewhere there. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and we're just gonna lock image so we can start working on this. And uh, a couple other things that we're going to do is, um, I believe I have to create an axis for italic and believe that was uh, 10 degrees roughly. I know there's one other setting too. I think this might even be here. Uh, italic angle, yes. I'll do 10 there as well. I know one of these, uh, oops, I don't, it's an italic angle. We'll just actually call this italic angle. Um, I think this is actually the metric that Glyphs looks for. Um, kind of learning a lot here. Yep, there we go. Perfect. So, um, you notice that I typed in 10 degrees there. I think that's, it loosely looks kind of where I want to be. Uh, but if you compare this uh, sketch that I have on my screen here to the first video that I did, you'll probably notice that it doesn't look uh, like it's got quite the angle that uh, the sketch originally did. There's good reason for that. Uh, one of the things that I really took and learned as I was doing my research and my studying is that an italic should have, uh, in most cases, between 8 and 12 degrees uh, of, a, of an angle here. And when I originally scanned that uh, first letter in, it ended up being closer to like 15 or 16 degrees. And truth be told, I did do, I guess what's now going to kind of be called a lost episode here, of this series and I was working with that angle and it was really, it was just too much. Um, as, as hard as I was trying to make it work, it just wasn't really behaving the way I wanted to and I wasn't really happy with the result that I was getting. Uh, so I ended up doing uh, a bit of research as I said and uh, when I kind of came back to the table I realized if I just kind of tilt the angle back a little bit, I'm actually gonna have a, a better time. Uh, so that's what I ended up doing. Uh, so as you notice, it's uh, it's not as a uh, a drastic of an angle, but I, the whole series here, uh, everything that we'll be doing, I think will still um, you know be applicable to designing italics or anything like that. Of course, I'm I'm trying to do this in a brush script format, but um, yeah, it was it was fascinating. It's not something that I've necessarily thought about too often. <clears throat> But it's amazing how much of a difference it can make, even just a few degrees. It's, uh, you know, I, I chose five degrees. I could have maybe gone to, to 12 degrees. Um, 
I just, at the end of the day, I was kind of liking how this uh, seemed to be working a little bit better, so that's kind of what I stuck with. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's been a lot of trial and error. It's if, if there's anything about this channel that I continually remind myself, it, it's that... Um, that everything that I'm, I'm sharing on here, sometimes it's about me learning as much as I'm teaching uh, what I'm learning. And um, it just, that was a very good example of something like that uh, being the case where uh, I did not know, now I know. And uh, I mean, truth be told, this is the first time I've ever done uh, an italic uh, letter form before even. So um, in many ways, this has just been kind of outside my comfort zone, but I think that makes it exciting. That's what makes these fun is, uh, you know, just kind of moving along and, and learning these things as we go. So what I'm going to do, a lot of this you're going to be pretty familiar with if you've seen any of my other videos. Uh, the plan here is that we're going to step through the control characters, which as you always know are the uh, capital O, the capital H, the lowercase n, which we're working on right now, and the lowercase o. Um, of course, I'm starting with the lowercase n because um, that is, uh, that's the letter that I sketched, so that's the letter that we're going to roll with. And right now, I'm primarily focusing on my horizontal um, guides here as I'm kind of even kind of jumping into the uh, vertical ones, because the thing is, is I don't want to do, um, at least for this, I don't know that I want to do uh, straight 90 degree uh, handles here. I want to have these actually kind of mimic the uh, the angle that I've got going on um, with my stems here. So uh, that's going to be kind of a point of focus. I'm also going to Maybe just kind of tighten this curve up a little bit. Thing is, is I could be doing this absolutely wrong, and I guess I might not know until a little bit later in the game here, but uh, I think something like that seems to be matching up pretty well. I'm just going to go ahead and flip a speed punk on here, and I know this is a pretty extreme view, but I think I can keep everything straight here as I'm looking. Um, so yeah, something like that. I think that that'll be fine. Uh, the other thing that I want to do as well is to figure out the, uh, the ends of my letters here. Um, I know there's a way that we can go and, and, uh, and set these up so that it can be automated. Um, and that I, I'd probably have to do a little bit more research if I'm being completely honest. Um, I'm not familiar with that in glyphs. I know it is kind of a similar situation to uh, a smart uh, component or something like that. Um, but for now, I'm just going to kind of keep things a bit on the easy side. I'm also going to go through, and uh, as you can probably see here, I'm just going to flip the left a vertical upside down. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have a pretty even letter form here. Um, again, for now, I think this will be okay. We'll see as we go if that ends up being a good decision or not. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is I think we'll just go ahead and we'll trim this in half here. Well, roughly in half. Um, because similar to what I would do if I was doing just a, a regular um, just vertical or I guess Roman letter um, is that we're going to make the shoulder separate. So we'll go through, we'll do that. I'll get my control uh, points added here. And then similar to what we did before at the start, I'm just going to go through, we'll line up the horizontal ones first. Then we'll come back here in a moment and figure out those uh, vertical ones. Um, so I probably won't get this prettied up right away, but uh, 
think we can kind of get things in the ballpark here. So we'll get these lined up. Perfect. Of course, it doesn't look perfect right now, but that's okay. Uh, next thing that I'm going to go ahead and do here is we'll just kind of loosely line that up. Uh, now, the challenge is to start figuring out this outer curve here. Um, of course, I want something that's going to uh, mimic my sketch in a good way. Um, should probably make sure that I'm also grabbing the correct points here. But I think we'll do maybe something like that for the top. And then maybe something similar for the bottom here. So. Um, it's going to be a matter of figuring out where this needs to kind of go. So I am going to have that kind of bump in there a little bit. Um, and then the challenge, hopefully it's not too much of a challenge, but just kind of figuring, figuring out the rest of the shoulder here. The other thing that I'm kind of looking at too is I think I can maybe move in a little bit more. Uh, I might even... I might have done the trick, uh, to be honest. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of move this point up a little bit as well, just trying to smooth out this curve on the inside. Uh, the other thing that I'm looking at as I continue to refine here is that I can probably do something like that maybe give a little bit more weight to the top there. Um, I mean, truth be told, though, you're you're literally watching, aside from practice, uh, the first uh, time that I've really truly sat down and drawn this character. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty pleased with where this is already sitting. Um, maybe something like that on the the entry stroke, because I'm also thinking ahead too. Maybe something that kind of thickens up a little bit more there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to delete that one on the bottom. I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to turn this into a component yet. That is something that I know gets asked about a fair amount on my videos is why I don't use components. Um, I actually just started a personal project that isn't uh, likely going to be a video, but um, I have been making a point to to use those a bit more, uh, so hopefully we start seeing more of those here. Um, at least that's my goal anyway, is that I can start kind of doing more of that. Um, what I'm also going to do something I'm thinking about. Um, originally I kind of had this kind of just kind of come down to make a, a point or a, kind of just an abrupt end there. Just kind of wondering, because I suppose if you're lettering, that's probably more of a smooth curve that you would have going on there. I might even just drop this down a bit more, just so it looks like it's a little bit more of a natural curve. Of course, if I do that, uh, something that I would need to do is just kind of mimic that along the top here as well. So uh, let's see where this takes us. Just kind of creates more of a gentle curve there. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is we're going to kind of round off the top of this just a bit more. Maybe something like that. At this point, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to remove the background because I don't think I need to deal with that anymore. Um, also just going to continue adjusting this just a little bit. Um, again, this is one of those things where I feel like I could sit here and just have a whole video of me doing nothing but tweaking this, but uh, I doubt that would be very exciting. So. Um, I think for something like this, though, I think I'm actually getting pretty close to a place that I'm happy with this. The curves don't look 
too far out of line. Um, and if I back up a little bit, because I'm kind of anticipating this would be uh, you know, more of a display face than anything else, um, I, I don't see this being a situation where you would want to use this for body copy. Um, maybe I just kind of thicken that up a little bit. I think that kind of helps out a little bit more as well. Uh, so I still want to maintain some readability if you're a little bit farther away. Uh, but if I just kind of jump back here a little bit, I'm I'm pretty happy with where that's going. Uh, now as far as uh, spacing goes, that's going to be my next uh, challenge here because I have truthfully never spaced anything like this before. Uh, my guess is that I probably want my spacing to be uh, just a bit tighter than um, than if I were doing this as a serif or something like that. Um, so I think what I'm going to do here, again, I'm just, I'm kind of fussing with all these different points here. Uh, so easy to get carried away, uh, especially when you don't know what you're doing, right? <laughs> Maybe something like that. Um, and there we go. Actually, I think that might be what I was after. Something that I wish, I don't even know, this might be a thing in Glyphs. I wish I could actually change um, on my verticals here, having it snap on uh, 90, if I could just say, hey, this is a 10 degree uh, slant, so use that instead. That would actually be a super handy feature. Um, and who knows, maybe it is, and I'm just not aware of it, but that's the fun of learning. So, Also just gonna go, again, I'm kind of messing around a little bit more with just kind of how this curves down here. Um, maybe just adjusting that angle a little bit more so I've got more of the curve that uh, I'm after. And we'll just grab this. Of course, as I'm going through and continually adjusting this, I'm realizing it probably would have been a smart idea to uh, go ahead and make that a smart component, but for now, I think we're doing all right. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do as well is just kind of taper that in just a touch, maybe. Um, it is just kind of feeling a bit on the thick side there. Uh, another thing that I might do, maybe I just kind of do something like that instead. So it's um, it's just giving some more space there is, is all I'm really after. And then we'll just kind of tweak this. So I, I probably am going to have to keep in mind that I might have to make optical adjustments like that where not everything's going to be perfect and lined up, but that's that's fine. It's not going to bother me too much. Uh, something I am curious, though, to see is um, just for the sake of, of getting this moving forward in an, another letter here is how this is going to look with the H. Um, so to line this up, I'm not using the overshoot for the the vertical strokes here. I'm just trying to keep that for the um, for things like the top of the shoulder there. But uh, let's just go and see how something like this might work. So I'm using the uh, the N to determine my angle or to keep that consistent. Uh, the other thing. Probably take the crotch of the H and just drop that down a little bit more. Um, something like that. Now, granted, I do have a ways to go, so I uh, I understand that this isn't anything pretty or final, but um, but at least we're kind of getting somewhere. Um, the things that I might have to keep in mind is how I might want to have these connect as I go. Um, so with the end, obviously we've got kind of the entry point here, it goes down, 
just kind of curves down here. If I were to keep moving this up, I'd probably maybe consider having the uh, the terminal here of the end going up. Um, the thing with the H then is I'd probably have to create a different uh, top, kind of maybe like a loop or something for that. Uh, so something I'm going to do just for fun here is we're going to add a new character and we're going to call it uh, h.alt and effectively what this does is uh, it creates an alternate for us and with that alternate what I can do here is uh, we'll just go through and for fun let's see what this idea might look like so I'm kind of in an experimental mood right now just to see where this would go. Um, so we'll just kind of roughly sketch that out. And the other thing we want is to reverse those contours because we want that to be a part of the H here. Um, And yeah, let's, uh, it, it kind of turns into a little bit of a repetitive process here, but you, you kind of get the idea of where we're going. So uh, we'll just go ahead and get these kind of set up. Uh, now for something like this, I'm just trying to think, just kind of plan this out. So my first focus is going to be on the top here. I'm actually thinking I'm going to move this down a little bit just to give me some more space, kind of a bigger run up to work with. Um, maybe we just kind of bring it out something like that. Um, if I'm going to stick with the 10 degree thing or the roughly 10 degree thing, um, do something like that for the extreme on this side. And then yeah, it's just going to be a matter of kind of moving these points into some kind of pleasing arc or circle there. Um, then with this one, so we're going to start kind of keeping some even uh, strokes here. We'll get those sorted. Get this one sorted to kind of that 10 degree, roughly. Um, this one will do the same. So we're, we're starting to kind of get that nice uh, open curve. I'm actually going to maybe bring this one up a little bit more too, just to kind of give that brush more space. Um, and then just for the final part here, I I have to imagine I'm going to have some some errors or some things kind of crashing in together, but uh, we'll just kind of take this as we go. This may end up being a total mess, but uh, I think I'm just going to accept that I'm going to be making some mistakes here, and that'll be okay. So, uh, so kind of just jumping out of this real quick. Um, So I, I like how I have this curve towards the top here. Uh, the the thing that I'm debating, which I really don't know how to handle, is when this curves around, uh, how close do we cut here? Obviously, I don't want this notch in the way. That's not really desirable. My first thought, and, and I'm doing this without even looking it up either, but my first thought would maybe just be... Um, to run it in like that, because if I think about this, um, you've got this part that kind of curves up here, and I, I would think that's kind of the path you would take. Um, and then I might lean this out here a little bit more. That It sounds like a good idea. This could be an absolutely terrible idea. <laughs> um, but I'm going to try it. So uh, let's 
Just kind of maybe thicken this up a little bit more. Maybe drag that point out a little bit more. Um, the other thing that I might do is just kind of bring this point down so I can uh, smoothen that curve off a little bit. I'm betting I could probably do the same with this one too, actually. So we'll kind of make this a little bit larger so we kind of get more of that just nice pleasant curve going on there. Um, actually too, I suppose there's no rule saying, at least the rules that I'm making up, <laughs> um, but maybe I just go a little bit above the actual uh, cap height here, or uh, sorry, the ascender height. Um, and just gives it a little bit more space. And then we'll just kind of wrap this up here. Uh, so the last thing I'm gonna do is I am going to create a, a couple rogue points here, but the whole idea is we're just gonna kind of taper that off there a little bit more. We'll smooth that curve out a little bit, um, maybe even a little bit more. But maybe something like that gets us kind of a pleasant curve to look at. And we'll just kind of have that just kind of tuck in there a little bit. So um, I'm just trying to avoid having too much kind of happening in one spot. So I'm, I'm trying to honor uh, this whole space here, this gap. At the same time, we've got this thick kind of crashing into the thin, so I don't want that just turning into a whole blobby mess there. Um, but at the least, we've got a letter, an alternate character, I should say, uh, that's looking halfway decent, in my opinion. Um, and I'm going to have to think about how these connect as well. Um, so with that in mind, um, I'm just going to maybe just run with a little bit of an idea here and uh, there's no guarantees that this would be a good one but it'd be fun to see what happens here so um, we'll do this and then we'll call it a wrap for the day so what I'm gonna do is uh, we're just gonna go through and, and kinda make a piece that connects here looks like it has a, a pretty decent flow to it um, I'm not going to perfectly line it up with this because I have to imagine that uh, in in the real world that that would not likely perfectly line up. It's kind of similar to like an X if we're drawing that. Um, but what I'm going to do is we'll just give this some curve here until I feel that it even loosely meets up with this point. Um, Actually, and we kind of have to do something like this. It looks like there's a bit of a, I don't know if there's a bit of a taper to it or not. Maybe there isn't. Yeah, the difficult part is going to be figuring out maybe this just needs to go up a little bit more. Maybe that was what I needed to do. I know this is going to look pretty rough, but um, like I said, we're trying something new, trying something different. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Um, definitely tell that I've got some practice though to uh, to focus on so um, so yeah I would have to do something like that um, it looks like it would thin out and maybe this is a situation I'm guessing this is a situation where I would need to go back and revisit uh, this here, but you kind of get the idea. Um, if I'm 
typing that enter that H um, yeah I'd say that's pretty thin so what I'll have to do there's gonna be a little bit of give and take here but I'm gonna have to go back and just kind of readjust how this uh, all kind of connects with each other here um, and hopefully we can make something work a little bit nicer but I do kind of like that that alternate style I don't mind uh, this one here for the, the start of a word you know if you're gonna write the word like have for example um, that you've you've got that H that it kind of starts with more of a a stroke that would be representative of that versus uh, this second one here uh, maybe you've got a word like tenth um, where you've got the N and the H in this case uh, you just got something that kind of just loosely makes things um, kind of tie in a little bit nicely so um, I'm going to I think call it here for now because that was actually quite a bit looks like I've got a little bit of research to do as well but uh, hopefully you're enjoying this um, like I said this will be a little bit off the beaten path from the videos that I normally create but uh, I thought it would be fun rather than just kind of showing uh, a process of here's how to do things or whatever uh, that you could actually kind of effectively sit down next to me as I learn this um, so if you have any comments, suggestions, tips, tricks, you name it, um, by all means feel free to hit up the comment section below and let me know what you know about this process because um, uh, I, I have to imagine that I might be making some mistakes uh, uh, already, but... Um, but it's definitely a process that I'm interested in learning about. Uh, if you want to keep up with this, if you want to make sure that you uh, are, are always up to date on when the next video is coming out, if it's this or any of my other series, make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, help others find these videos as well. So uh, easy way to do that is just go ahead and hit that like button. Or uh, if you want to take it a step further, share these videos with somebody that you know who might be interested in letters, drawing letters, typography, fonts, all that kind of stuff. Um, we're always looking to learn, build, and grow here. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.